Hey everyone, back with another video. Let's talk about the Arduino. Its development environment uses C++. In fact, they use C++ for all their microcontrollers. So Arduino development is based on C++. How about that? And it's the type of C++ that this channel was founded on, which is what I call C++, and I find it amazing. And so I did a project based on that. I'm gonna do a few videos that goes along with that. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna go through some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages of using this environment because it is not like a traditional C++ environment that you're used to seeing. So hang on, get some coffee, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So let's talk about some of the advantages to using C++ in an embedded environment, such as the one Arduino provides, is you get the modularity that you would have with C, but also now that it's C++, you have classes. And with classes comes scalability, much more, much easier to add onto a class and have member functions and member variables. And I think in the end, it makes it much easier to maintain, much more scalable. You have that power of C++ plus plus that you didn't have with C. I will show you there are some limitations with the IDE that Arduino provides you, the ID2, but you're also limited by some resource constraints. It's a embedded microcontroller. Um, the board I'm using, the Giga R1, does have a significant amount of RAM that you can play with. Plenty of storage space, I think 256 megabyte flash storage. There is some off chip storage that you can use. For a lot of uh, embedded applications, you're not going to run into too many issues you just have to worry about your stack space i think they only give you like eight kilobytes of per stack frame that they reserve but that's livable you can you can work with that and like i said if you're using c you're gonna automatically allocate on a heap and you don't have to worry about it um performance it depends on what you're doing so a desktop application or something you're running in a linux server it's not gonna have that type of performance this particular board has two cores i'm only using one for my example but you you can use the second core it's a different type of processor and you can offload stuff to that maybe as a, uh, a software defined interface that's what some a lot of people use those for but those are things you just have to be aware of and it's not so much the arduino's environment's fault which there are some issues with that it's more of a hardware issue if you've used arduino before a lot of this stuff up until recently was just 8-bit microcontrollers and you had severe limitations but now that they have i think they have this is the second series of 32-bit arm based cortex m series microcontrollers that are they're fantastic so when you pull up the ide you're gonna and you create a new project if you're using eclipse or if you're using um visual studio and then it, it gives you a hello world and you see main you're not going to see that in arduino in fact they use the dot ino extension and then they call them sketches and there is no header file it's just a single ino file as you can see here now when i first started playing with this i almost gave up on this thing i was like i i'm not dealing with this this isn't how i like to break my source code down into headers which have the function declarations and then have the function definitions in a in a um c plus plus file the same name which is typically what most people do anyway now some of my template functions may be header only but that's okay but their main is buried inside of their board support package it's a called a main.cpp file and inside of main what they do is they call setup for you and then they call loop for you now the now when they call loop it's inside of a actual loop and inside that loop they have at the at the very end they process any serial events because there is a external serial port that you can use via usb on this particular board and you can have like a console there's different consoles out there or you can just do simple printfs it's whatever you want to do but it's, it's great it's a great tool for debugging in real time in any arduino example sketch you will see a setup and in a loop and and just keep in mind that the setup and loop, they're inside of a main function somewhere. Now I'm gonna load up my project and then I'm gonna show you what I did that still takes advantage of the ease of setup that Arduino gives you, but then you can still do all the things you wanna do in a sophisticated embedded system that you would normally see if you're using an Eclipse-based environment or even uh, Visual Studio Code. So let me get that project open and I will be right back. Hey, we're back. So looking at the Arduino's 
IDE2. 2.3.4. It's a clean interface. It's based on Visual, Visual Studio Code. Now you'll notice I only have one .ino file, only one. And from there you can add C++ files and header files. I will show you how to do that. It's actually pretty easy. But what I want to show you first is there's my setup. I'll collapse that. And then there's my loop. Now my setup is quite extensive. I have to initialize the external flash. I initialize my serial console that I use. I instantiate some singleton pat singleton classes that I use because we're going to use them in this setup. And I add my gauges and widgets for the screen. And then here's where it gets interesting. They, since they give you an RTOS, well, they don't give it to you. You can use it if you want to. And I did. So I created several tasks. I um, break down my display into animations and updating of info lines. And then I have one that handles the, the Modbus communications back to my solar inverter. And I set those up first and set up. And then once loop kicks off, loop always runs. But now loop also runs with all the other tasks. And the, the loop function kind of acts as a um, it's like a foreground loop. And then the other tasks switch in and out automatically. I'm using cooperative task scheduling. So as each task runs, they, don't, they will not preempt each other. So this is the directory structure for this project. The single.ino file is kind of like your main.cpp file, as I said earlier. Now you can only have one of those. So you start with that and then you add in your classes and, or your source files separately. As you can see, I got my display interface here. I have a display interface settings class, which is a header only. Um, energy use, that's also a class. And you know, I follow the typical pattern of having declarations in the header file, definitions in the source file or the .cpp file. And then I have a print utility here. This is a header only. And then I added these in manually. And the interesting thing is, is if you add a file into here, they show up automatically in the IDE. And I'll demonstrate that. All right, so I went ahead and I generated a header file with a simple class in it. And the moment I hit saved, and now if I look in this project, it immediately shows up in the project right here. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to add it. It's all done automatically. Now, it's something similar you see on Eclipse with source files, where they, they manage your make file. And the Arduino ID does the same thing. And one of the things that, well, there's a few things about this ID I, I'm not crazy about. I, you can't close any of these. These are all always open. There's always going to be a tab here. I can hit build, which is this check mark. They call it verify. And it takes a long time to build. It could be up to several minutes. Now you saw earlier, I didn't have that many source files. I only had 20 files and that includes the uh, .ino file. And it's still building, but I'm gonna pause, but trust me, this is gonna take several minutes. Okay, it finished building. There were no errors, obviously, because it's classes. It's empty, and it's not even instantiated. And you get a nice little report at the end, you know, about how much storage space you've used. It's G++, the compiler, and it's, um, I think it's 2017 or, or 2014. I forget the version. It's not the latest version. So you're not going to get all the latest compiler features, but it's going to be modern C++, which is past 2011. Now, you know, we look around the IDE, obviously we have all the open tabs, which you can't get rid of. Um, I don't even think it has all the features that you can get with Visual Studio Code if you installed it separately. They set it up strictly for this environment. But they do make it easy as far as these are sketch examples that you've opened up before. 
this is where you select the type of board you have. I have an Arduino Giga one, and it's I already installed it right here. And I'm using the Embed OS version. And individual libraries, you can look them up. These are kind of, well, most of these were added by the community. And I did add some of these. Debugger that you can use. I don't have it hooked up right now, but you can actually step through the code. Now, it, it does not, here, here's another thing. I, with this, with Arduino, you have to have a separate debugger. Otherwise, you're going to be debugging by printfs. So it's a separate USB connection, and then there's a board that, another little sub board that I plug into the back of this board. I'll probably show that in another video. But anyway, that information's right here. Works okay. It's not that great, but I was able to debug some things, and it got the job done. Most of the time, I'm, I'm kind of debugging by using the printf statements anyway, because I'm doing runtime debugging. And then you have your own your search, and you can do a search and replace globally it's not that great at replacing variables like it would be in eclipse where let's say for example um i wanted to go to the class and i wanted to rename this you know and you want to refactor it doesn't always work that good i find myself using the search and replace globally but it gets the job you know the idea gets the job done and i found that like for doing if i'm adding things simply and navigating around, I have to use the search a lot. But otherwise, if I'm, if I'm doing development, I'll do it in Eclipse. I'll take all these files and I'll build like a shell Eclipse project, you know, and I'll, I'll tell it that, it, you know, I'll just make up some compiler for it. Even though it won't build, but at least I can navigate around using IntelliSense. You also have a serial, um, well, the serial plotter is a specific type of app for looking at data. But they, they do have a serial monitor that you can pull up, a little debug console. And of course, you have the output of the compiler itself. And like I said, one of the things that drives me crazy about this IDE is I like seeing a list of all the source files over here on the side in like a project project manager, like you you know you do in Eclipse or, or in Visual Studio. And then it's a tree format, so I can go in and I can look at the classes and the member variables. You don't get that with this. So you're kind of coding like it was 20 years ago, where you're coding like you're on Linux and all you have is a text editor and you're doing your builds in, inside a terminal window. I like I like having a modern ID where everything's all there, which is why I use, a, I use a Eclipse quite a bit if you've seen in my other videos. But Visual Studio is also excellent. I, I use that quite extensively as well. But you know, if I want to find something, I have to go to here. Uh, I'm like, okay, I want to see where this is used. Well, I can't do that here. It doesn't. There's no ref, you know, references here. So I have to take this, copy it, and stick it into the search. Kind of, you know, it's almost like what Microsoft Word does. And now, now I can see where it's used all over the place. I can navigate around that way, and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But you still have all the advantages of having all the libraries. So your development time, you're still ahead of the curve when it comes to doing development. And one final thing I want to show you, if you want to add a particular library and use it, I mean, there's two ways. You can Google it and do some searches. There's some, there's some good information on their website and you can, you can look up a particular library and they'll give you an example. But a real convenient way to do it is you just go into here under examples and they have built-in examples and they also have one for my particular board, the Arduino Giga R1. And I can just go through and look and say, hey, I want to, if I want to read the SD card, how do I do that? Or let me pick one of the ones that I've done already here. I pulled up a decent example where I loaded um, the display. And when I, I will run it and I'll show you what it looks like. So what it does, the classes are in this header. Now, interestingly enough, you can open this. Okay, and you see it's locked. And another thing is, these board support package files they give you, you can close them out. It just happens to be the source files that you have, you can't close out. I don't know why that is. So you can see the classes, the class that they give you, and they're calling different things that they provide in their board support package. And maybe that's not the right name, but that's what I call it, because that's what it's called in every other platform that's out there. But you look, it's a .ino file, okay? You know, you, you have a little bit of information about what it does and who wrote it. And you would instantiate this object, which they do in global space. And then you can see you got a display because you have to begin it. 
most of most of their functions have some kind of begin or it's an initialization function and then right here in setup they do all these and then they kind of loop forever and do nothing so let's say you created your display here and then what you could do is you know then you would add your you would add your user code right here okay so this will build i will it takes a while um even this is one file and uh i'm gonna time it all right well that took two minutes to build and be right back i gotta hook up the cable to get this to run so even uh loading it onto the board takes a long can take a long time because it goes through the build process again all right while it loads up i get blank screened is it's drawing our geometric figures interesting enough i loaded in the original app to show you what it looks like and this is my solar inverter and what it's currently doing and you can see with um the arduino you get a lot of little libraries and widgets that you can quickly put something together all using c plus plus you know and it's the kind of c plus plus that we like to use where it may not be as fancy as like would be in windows but it works very well for us all right so that's my example of the arduino build environment if you have experience with this, anybody that's out there and you have some pointers or tips to share, please put them in the comments below. Um, like I said, this is my first Arduino project and I never even used the 8-bit microcontrollers. Um, I went straight to the 32-bit uh, version. So with that, I'm going to close out and thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe on the way out, please. And I'll see you on the next one.